So are you someone who is thinking about buying a new Mac and are you also thinking about maxing it out to eight terabytes worth of internal storage? Well, here's a few things for you to consider. If you buy yourself the M4 Max MacBook Pro and if you upgrade that from the one terabyte to the eight terabyte, that is going to cost you 2,200 pounds. Now, don't forget that 2,200 pound is actually only for seven terabytes because you're going from one to eight so on a cost per terabyte basis that is going to cost you 314 pounds and 28 pence per terabyte now on the other hand you might be thinking to yourself well, i'm going to buy myself an m4 pro mac mini well to go from an m4 pro mac mini base version of half a terabyte up to eight terabytes you are looking at 2400 pound now don't forget that is actually only an upgrade of 7.5 terabytes because you started off with half a terabyte and then went to eight so it's 7.5 terabytes and on a cost per terabyte basis, that is £320. However, what you could do is to go over to the Fideco website and you can order one of their MT480F Thunderbolt 5 enclosures. And then by the time you get to the checkout and you add David Harry for a 15% discount, that is going to net you £192.95p for the enclosure. And then you scoot off over to Amazon and you buy yourself an 8 terabyte variation of the Western Digital SN850X and that is going to cost you £542 and then when you add the cost of those two items together that comes to £734.95 now if you divide that by 8 to get a cost per terabyte that is going to cost you £91.86 per terabyte and that works out to be less than a third of the cost per terabyte of the Apple storage. Now, if you're in North America and you're paying by the US dollar, or if you're on mainland Europe and you're paying by the euro, it is going to be the same. You will be paying less than a third of the price that Apple charge for their storage if you go and build one of these SSDs, which I'm about to show you how to build. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is get into this video, show you how to put together this particular SSD, and then I will do some speed testing as well, and then I will come back for an end summary. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to just take a quick look around the enclosure which is made completely of an alloy. So basically the entire enclosure acts as a heatsink which is awesome. Now the top of the enclosure here has got a fan in it. Now that fan draws cool air in and then it blows it out down to the bottom here through these fins and also out of the top here through these fins. So it's basically got a really good airflow system for cooling the top part of the enclosure, which is actually the part of the enclosure which has got a thermal pad on it, which then connects directly to the SSD. Now on this end here, we've got a C port, which is 80 gigabits per second and Thunderbolt 5 compatible. And then just next to it here, this is actually an indicator light. Now the way we open up the enclosure is to get it in this orientation so basically it's upside down then we'll just use our thumb here and then we'll just pry it open so just push up a little bit and there we go there is the enclosure opened now with the enclosure opened I'm just going to insert the SSD but it's also worth noting that this enclosure comes with its own screwdriver and also its own tiny little screw here for attaching the SSD into the enclosure now to to insert the SSD it will only go in one way if we have a look here there's a notch or a cutout on the SSD and that lines up with a guide pin on the M.2 socket here on the enclosure so what we do we just guide in the SSD push it in until you can't push it any further you might feel it click a little bit and then the SSD itself will just hold itself into place and feel like it's a bit springy like that so if you have a look from the side as we can see the SSD will just hold itself into place. Then what we do, we get the little tiny screw that comes with the enclosure. We close down the SSD there, and then we'll get that little tiny screw into the screw hole there that holds the SSD into place. We'll use the supplied screwdriver to then 
screw down that screw there and then that is the ssd all inserted super easy now on this side of the enclosure the inside of the main lid part there it's actually got some cellophane wrapping in there so what we need to do or cellophane protection layer so what we'll do we'll remove that cellophane protection layer and as we can see there that whole entire inside is actually a thermal pad which is super awesome and then literally all we do is just to close over the enclosure like that press it down and that's now the enclosure and the ssd all ready to connect to the mac and to connect the enclosure to the mac we just use this thunderbolt 5 cable that comes with the enclosure so obviously we just put one end of the cable into the enclosure and then we put the other end of the cable into the Mac. Okay, so I'm onto the desktop for my Mac, and as you can see here, I already have the drive attached and formatted. However, what I'm going to quickly do is to show you how to format the drive. So what we need to do is to come up here to where we see this magnifying glass icon. We'll tap on there, and then we'll start typing in disk utility into Spotlight Search here. So D I S K U T I and at some point it is going to give us the shortcut for disk utility so click on disk utility now with inside disk utility the first thing I'm going to do is to come up to where it says view here tap in here and make sure it says show all devices so tap on there and also I would recommend that you only have the one external drive connected whilst you do this just so that you don't accidentally erase the wrong drive so I'm just going to tap onto the root of the drive here so just tap into there then I'm going to come over to erase tap onto arrays and then i'm going to give this a meaningful name i'm just actually going to call it the same thing so far the code eight terabyte i'm going to use the apfs format and also use the guid partition map so let me erase that and as we can see i've now erased the ssd let me exit disk utility and there is the ssd now on the desktop so what i'm going to do now is to just mount my raid zero drive okay so i've now mounted my raid zero drive and the reason why i'm going to use this is because this is going to be faster than the max internal drive and it also will not bottleneck anything being sent or received to the Fardico with the eight terabyte SSD into it. Now what I'm going to do first is just run some quick uh, Blackmagic disk speed tests. So the first thing I'm going to test here is the Mac itself. So this is the internal storage for the Mac. So just kind of get a bit of a, you know, bit of a look at what's going on here just so that we can see what's going on with the Mac and what its internal speeds are like. Now, like I say, I'm using the RAID 0 only because the Mac will bottleneck with the size of folder that it is that I want to actually move over to test the 8 terabyte Fardico. So there we go, that's the max internal storage. Now what I'm going to do is just to switch over to the Fardico with the 8 terabyte in. So there we go, there let me open up here. So again, quick disk speed test. Now, although this disk speed test is going to be useful for certain things, it's obviously the real world disk speed test that we're more interested in because I'm going to be transferring one terabyte's worth of data. Okay, so that'll give us an idea there of this speed of it running under a uh, Blackmagic disk speed test. So let me stop that. And then what I'm going to do is come down and then I will test the RAID here. So let me open up the RAID and test that. And as you can see there, the RAID there is a lot faster than both the internal storage and also the external Fardico 8 terabyte SSD. So obviously this RAID can't cause any type of bottlenecking when doing the real world disk speed testing. So let me just get into the real world disk speed testing. Okay, so the drive that's open on the bottom here, this is the 8 terabyte RAID drive and the drive that's open at the top, this is the Fardico with the 8 terabyte SSD with inside of it. And I'm going going to be moving this folder about now if we have a quick look inside this folder as we will see here this has got 1 million megabytes worth of data with inside of it which basically consists of 15 files now if I just show you just quickly inside here are a number of different ProRes 422HQ files so what I'm going to do here is to grab that folder drop it onto the Fardico and hit start now what I'm going to be doing here is to time it to see how long it takes to write the, the files to the Fardico 8 terabyte so what we're 
measuring here is the 508 terabytes write speed. Now, just before I start speeding through this, as we can see here, we're getting somewhere as an average of six gigabytes per second during this writing process. So just keep an eye on the data written number here with inside activity monitor as I speed through this. And then when I get to the end, I'm just gonna pause it and get a timing to see how long it has taken to move or write the one terabyte folder. Okay, I'm going to come back in here and get ready to hit pause once that folder is populated onto the Fideco 8 terabyte. So if you give us a moment and hold on. There we go. Okay, so that was 2 minutes and 49 seconds. Let me just make a note of that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to reset the stopwatch. I'm going to take the 1 terabyte folder from the RAID. I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to move the one terabyte back again. So therefore, what I'm going to be doing this time is to test for the read speed of the Fidico 8 terabyte. So let's see. So drop start. OK, so like I've just said, what I'm testing here for is the read speed of the Fidico. And also at the same time, just keep an eye on the data written here on Activity Monitor. That will give you an idea of the actual read speed as it is going through this one terabyte data dump. So let me just speed up through this and get the timing at the end. OK, I'm going to come back in here and get ready to hit pause once that folder is populated. And there we go. So that was 2 minutes and 46 seconds for the read speed. So what I'm going to do now is to manually calculate the write and the read speed bit rates for the Fideco 80 gigabits per second enclosure with the 8 terabyte Western Digital SN850X with inside of it. OK, so as far as the real world disk speed tests are concerned, the write speed is 5,917 megabytes per second, and the read speed is 6,024 megabytes per second. Okay, so to an end summary then, and some of you out there might be thinking to yourselves, come on Dave, that all sounds well and good mate, but surely you're not trying to tell us that having 8 terabytes of external storage is better than having 8 terabytes of internal storage. Well, do you know what? You are absolutely correct. There is absolutely no way on this planet that I would recommend anybody buy any external storage if they could afford to put that storage internal to their Mac. And that's the problem isn't it who can afford these prices so let me be really clear about this that eight terabytes upgrade for any of those max even if i could afford that kind of money i still wouldn't buy that because it is just seriously terrible value for money i'm not going to get into the whole thing about my whole thoughts on the way apple profiteer on these things but it's ridiculous when you consider that a very fast thunderbolt 5 8 terabyte ssd is less than a third of the price of the eight terabyte option for the internal Apple storage. Now, when it comes right down to brass tax there, I'm sorry, but I am not gonna pay that kind of money. So whilst yes, having the internal storage is better for a number of reasons, not least of all, especially if you've got a laptop and you're traveling and you don't have all kinds of things hanging off the back of it, the problem is the price. And it really is just, that is the bottom line, the price. If Apple's eight terabyte storage was say, 800 pounds then yeah i'd be right up for that do you know what i mean because that would be good value for money now another thing to consider here as well the eight terabyte internal storage options are going to be slightly faster and they're going to have probably and not that i know, not that i know this for sure but they're probably going to have just as much slc cash as something like the eight terabyte sn850x however they will definitely be slightly faster on the internal storage but as you can see there, the speed inside this Fideco Thunderbolt 5 enclosure with the 8 terabyte Western Digital SN850X was around 6,000 megabytes per second averaging across the read and the write. Now, 
you know, if anybody out there thinks that 6,000 megabytes per second or 6 gigabytes per second isn't fast enough for their storage, then, yeah, maybe you should be buying the internal storage for the Max. Anyway, I think I've done enough in this video to explain to people what my thoughts are on these Mac prices. But also, hopefully, I've shown you, like, you know, in good effect, just how good this Fideco Thunderbolt 5 SSD is with the Western Digital Storage with inside of it. Anyways, that will do it for that. And there will be links to everything used in this video in the video description below. And don't forget, if you are buying from the Fideco website, use my 15% discount code, David Harry, and that is actually site-wide. So that will get you 15% off anything you buy from the Fideco website. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you like this. It. and if you super liked it or there was something exceptionally good about this video that you really liked or maybe it was dead entertaining i don't know you may want to subscribe to the channel for similar videos to this one in the future and i've got a load of them in the past anywho i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now